Hi, and welcome to another SEO video from Underground SEO University. Today I'm gonna to be doing a voiceover, kind of my take on Google's Search 22 uh, presentation. It's a presentation that Google does every year about all the new things they're doing in search. And then when you actually uh, reverse engineer the algorithms and test them the way that we do in Underground SEO University, you could kind of really get good information from this by reading between the lines as to what Google's saying and doing. So let's get right to the video and I'll give you my two cents as I go through and I'll curate the information. I'll cut out the bits that are not important so you don't have to watch it. So I'll give you the search 22 that you can watch and with the actual SEO information of what we've tested and what this means when Google says X, Y, Z, it means you need to do ABC for your rankings. Before we do that, I just wanna let you know that this information is put out by Underground SEO University. We are currently accepting students. If you want to learn from methodical testing of what the actual ranking factors are with no guessing, you wanna join Underground SEO University, email me at joshpashinsky at gmail.com. We have special discounts on right now and I will get you started. Okay, so let's take a look at the video. Okay, so here's the video. You might think of this as a search box. But and they're like going to start with their advertisement as per usual. Google advertisement. Or an, I need that look, looker upper. It's kind of a Where they're showing off all their new stuff. A thingamajig fixer. Uh, that's better. That's uh, Google it's Lens in case you don't know what that is. That will tell you the length of the line and they've in got mathematical time. equations, a new you know, transformer to do mathematical equations. It's a language barrier. And I'm just going to pause it for a second. So it's interesting that they're saying this right now because it's important. If you think that Google's just a search engine, it's not. It's it's an entity engine. It's an artificial intelligence which is reading all of the dark data. They call it dark data. All of the dark data, all of the web data, the unstructured data or structured, whether it's structured or not, they're getting an artificial intelligence to read and understand all of it and make everything into entities. Now, entities is kind of an abstraction in the AI world. If you don't know what entities means, it's really important for SEO. An entity is a concept. An entity is a thing. So they've been moving away from strings uh, to things. They used to say things and not strings has their, been their motto for like the last 10 years at least. And Google has been planning this and been moving towards this for quite some time. You need to know all the entities. And if you take a look at Google ads, you can see uh, where they keep the entities under concepts. So for example, let me show you here. If you go to Google ads, and if you go in, if you sign in, but if you go to tools and settings, and you go to keyword planner, Google will tell you their entity information right here. And this is the best place to tell what their actual entity information is. So if you do a search for anything at all, let's do anything at all, let's do best top products and let's uh, not just select Canada let's do the whole world English speaking world and let's do uh, top 10 ser services and do top 10 products okay and we say get results it doesn't really matter what I typed in here just for this example but this is a really good way of telling uh, what they think it makes a lot of money. If you want to see what makes a lot of money in terms of products or services, just uh, do a search for top best top 10 products, top 10 services, top 10 products, and just select it by money. And you'll see here how much money is behind these different kinds of services and products and whatnot that's going on. Best drop shipping products, uh, for example, top 10 products to sell on Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, look over here. That's not the important thing. For, for the purposes of the, the example I was trying to do here. Look over here at refined keywords. And these refined keywords, these are all the entities that they have extracted from the particular searches that you did. You are an entity that did a search for entities and Google will give you entities back. In other words, you are a concept to Google's AI that looked for other kind of concepts and they will match your concept search from your personalization and geolocation and past search history, vetted strongly by what you searched, uh, and that they will they will compare that information to the information of the internet that they have crawled and pulled and ent extracted entities out of, and give you the entities that match on those two fronts: who you are, what you normally like, where you're located, what you searched, versus what they have available that isn't spam that they've gotten rid of and doesn't have uh, demoting factors that they don't like 
from being non-helpful or from being bad or whatever. And they'll match that up for you in a kind of a top 10 structure right now. In the future, you'll talk to Google and it'll just give you the, the right answer, the top answer, right? So look at the entities they pulled out. They know what's a brand and not a brand. They know that this is uh, site brands. They know that these are other brands. They know the year, they know others. Now, if you're like, well, what do you mean? Well, it's, a, it's a concept, Josh. What are you talking about concepts? Okay, watch this. If I download this information, it is this secret information that only Google has that you can't get access to unless you sign up for Google Ads. You don't actually have to have a paying ad going. All you have to do is just sign up for Google Ads, which I believe is free uh, still, at least at the time of this making this video, it's free. If you click CSV, you could download this information in a CSV, it'll prepare a report. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know what I'm gonna show you and you know the magic I'm about to show you. If you click on this CSV and take a look at this, Notice here, they give you the information for searches, the three months changed year over year, the competition, and the amount of money people are willing to put behind it. But look at here, here's where they have the entities, the concept, but they call it a concept. And the entity or concept is synonymous. You see that? They actually call it concept here in the CSV. This shows that they know what is a brand. Here's the site. Here's these different kind of site brands. These are non-brands. Uh, they know Amazon is a brand. If it was a non-brand, it'd say non-brand here. They know Amazon is a brand as a concept, and this is a site as a concept. They have concepts of years, concepts of sites, concepts of other brands, concepts of non-brands, concepts others. And this was a bad example search. If I searched for something else, they would have a ton of entity information here. It would go on for like 10 of these of different kinds of ideas and concepts that they were able to pull out of this information. So that's what I mean by an entity. It's a concept. It's a concept. I don't know why computer scientists called it an entity, uh, but it's a concept. It's a thing. It's an idea. Uh, it's a noun, if you will. It is extracted from all web pages that Google can read, which is all of our web pages that they steal and they scrape and they put in their database so that they have this product they can give for free to the world and then charge billions of dollars and make billions of dollars off it. They extract all the entities, all the concepts, the nouns, the ideas out of these pages, and they know about all of this and they have that information in, in Google. So going back to this video, when Google brags about being a small business tool and being a fact checking tool as they are right now and talk about this kind of entity information about how they can help you with vacations. They've decimated the vacation market. They took that over. Uh, when they talk about this, they're not just a search engine and they're not a search engine anymore. They are an entity engine. They are an artificial intelligence, which is trying to be a helper and thinking outside the box. That's exactly what it does is it thinks outside the box. So anyway, let's go back and join and see what new things from Google are coming, but it's not a search engine. It is an AI. Hey everyone, and welcome. We're coming to you live from our third annual Search On. Everything we do at Google is to improve the lives of as many people as possible. Since they Except for business owners who they demote and destroy their businesses, and except for the business owners they extort to make them pay to be at the top of Google. But you know, otherwise they're making life great for everybody. Any grams in an ounce to how to say hello in Japanese. If you could find the words, we could help you find answers to life's questions, big and small. So much so. That's a good point. And that Google is always going to be based on words. There's always going to be some keywords or a search, some kind of query to start them off. The AI will get smart enough to a point that it'll know what you're searching for before you do. Search will always be based on a query. So if you're like, oh my God, you know, I don't know, is search going to get so big at some point, Josh, the AI is so smart that it just cuts SEOs out? No. SEOs will always be available, always be necessary. The job will just change and the AI will get smarter. And what what we have to say to the AI will just get, uh, ch just change over time. It's not, it's, that, that's not a problem. But it'll always start with a query. Think of Google. I'd imagine a lot of you would see this. But the way people seek information isn't confined to a text box. Over time, we've evolved how we bring our mission to life, helping connect you to information in ways beyond how you might traditionally think of search. You can now search what you see with your camera. You can ask a question aloud with your voice. And you can find a song by humming it, even if you're out of tune. Yeah, so that's, again, all artificial intelligence. That's all AI using uh, uh, data and using statistical models to match probably what you meant to probably what you want. 
and probably what they have there. But that doesn't change anything. It's always going to be a query, always going to be something prompting the search at the start. They'll get to the point where the, the assistant will tell you what you want to know uh, and suggest things for you, but that's all going to be based off of stuff you've previously searched and queried before. But as humans, exploring information isn't something we do in just one way. We rely on our many senses and a variety of inputs to perceive the world around us. And as we learn and explore information, we approach it from different angles and tap into other people's experiences. For example, say you're strolling through your grocery store and stumble upon an unfamiliar vegetable. Intrigued, you okay, might I'm gonna fast forward a bit. A look. And as you check out, you might ask the grocer how it tastes and for any recipe recommendations. While making sense of the world the way humans do is a huge challenge for computers, we're getting closer by making huge leaps in computer science. We're now able to understand information from language to images to things in the real world. With this deeper understanding, we're going far beyond the search box to create search experiences that work like more like our minds. Yeah, so now he's talking about how they're going to get into AR and they're going to release Google Glasses. And uh, you're going to see Google ads all over the place. You're going to be able to see this, uh, search stuff from seeing. But it's all going to translate into text. Every transformer, every artificial intelligence, neural network, semantic network that they're using is going to take visual data, represent that in textual data, and then the textual data is going to match up with the ideas. It's going to change, be changed into entities, ideas, concepts, and that'll match up with the entities that you have uh, from any of your data, your video, your audio, your web pages. So it's going to be a one-to-one -one correlation and it's going to be textual at some point, right? Text will always be part of this chain somewhere along the chain. There will always be room for SEOs to do SEO on it. That are as multidimensional as people are. As we enter this new era of search, you'll be able to find exactly what you're looking for by combining images, sounds, text, and speech. You'll be able to ask questions with fewer words. Yes, but will most people do that? Probably not. You'll never beat the standard, what is the top 10 best uh, mattresses? Like, you know, that will still be, whether they said it or not, that, that semantic, that meaning of wanting to know the top 10 best mattresses will always be there. And people will, all, will quite often say it and, and type it. Or even none at all. And we'll still understand exactly what you mean. Or their AI's, AI helpers will, either way. And even suggest things you might find useful. And you can explore information in a way that makes sense to you, whether that's going deeper on the topic as it unfolds, or discovering new points of view that expand your perspective. We call this making search more natural and intuitive. But for you, we hope it means that the next time you close your eyes and think of Google, you'll imagine what it's like to search your world any way you want. Oh my God, what a nightmare. I think someone did a TED talk about that. Let me see. Uh, I think... Someone did a TEDx talk. Oh, look, it's me. <laughs> I did a TEDx talk where I said, you know what's going to happen? Uh, they're going to have ads looking for where exactly where you're seeing with uh, AI. Oh, I said that. Let's see. Oh, uh, six years ago. How did I possibly know that was coming? I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one paying attention. I'm not really sure. But anyhow, sorry for that blatant advertisement of myself. I'll continue on with this video. Anywhere you want. Today, we'll share our progress towards this vision, starting with searching and exploring visually. Already, searching with text is indispensable. Now, the age of visual search is here. And there's more ways for us to make more money off of you. <laughs> Cameras have been around for hundreds of years, and they're usually thought of as a way to preserve memories, or these days, create content. But a camera isn't just a content creation device. You see, that's how they think of it. A camera is just a content creation device. A picture is just content. It, it, it's represented textually. You could start with text and get a picture, and you can get a picture and just analyze that as text. And the text would then be analyzed for the semantic it means and extract the entities from it. It's all, it's a, it's a Duplo block process of them just going from one level to another level to another level. Everything will be moved to the entity level. Uh, that's what the AI will do. And then that's where all the search transactional stuff will happen, right? And that's where SEOs will do their work. So it's not a problem. It's a powerful way to access information and understand the world around you. So much so that your camera is the next keyboard. Yeah, 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 okay. It's a million times a month to search what they see. Yes, 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 we see things. This opens up entirely new ways to search. Let's take a look at how one craft maker uses multi-search to find exactly what she's looking for. 
My name is Sam Reese, and among many other things, I make crafts. Hot yeah. dog. They're not just any crafts, though. I make things that are like, uh... okay, so you kind of have to see yeah. the wall. Okay, so I know where this is going. Add the word purse to that search, and voila. I know where this is going, watch. So she takes a picture of her bagel that has sprinkles on it. She adds in the search query purse, and that's like giving Google Lens, it's, it's, it's just another Google search box, it's all it is. But what it's doing is it's the Google Lens AI, the visual AI, the computer reading AI, is reading that texture, seeing the spotty uh, pebbliness of it, and what it's doing is putting those into words, so to speak, spotty, pebbly, you know, whatever it, secret AI language it has inside of its own head. And then it's just going, okay, and then add the word purse to that. And then lo and behold. I snap a photo with lens and then add the word purse to that search. And voila, a delicious new accessory. Boom. And then they get uh, an accessory. It's it's not, again, it's uh, once once you decode the magic, once you know how that works, it's not as. Friends, I promise. <laughs> once you decode how that works, it's not really as impressive, right? That's priceless when you're working in the competitive world of professional crafts. You know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but if you're trying to find the perfect items for a baked goods based craft event, you might need a few extra words to explain yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Sam. Thank you for coming to Craft Club. At the Yay. end of the day, find your own unique voice. And sometimes that's really Look at my funny crafts. Glitter is forever, rhinestones are temporary. Does that sound cool, Elizabeth? Glitter is for, uh, I don't even. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> okay, if you have to ask if you sounded cool, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm being a jerk. Those people seem perfectly nice. I apologize. I didn't even know bagel purses were a thing. My search is available. Look at me try to be human. <laughs> in English globally. And I'm thrilled to share that it's coming to more than 70 languages in the next few months. Yeah, see, so that's another clue to you, right? Watch what language Google, uh, he doesn't like it either. Watch what language Google uh, rolls things out in because that's a big hint as to uh, if it's a transformer or not or what kind of AI it is. If they can roll out on all languages, then it's probably traffic based because AI is usually uh, right now is semantic, is language based. They have to train it on a corpus of specific language and they're very good at like translating English text into HTML or English into French. They're very good at that. If it's in the corpus, they can usually do it. And there's, if there's enough relational information in the corpus where they say, if you want to make a bold tag, you should use this. And then they put like a ampersand B, you know, ampersand kind of thing. Then they know that ampersand B ampersand means the bold tag. They, they can tell that, right? But if, if you have enough of that relational information there. So watch when Google releases an, an AI or a new release, because every new release is going to be AI based, every single one. So you need to start learning about AIs and joining SEO groups that understand AI. And they're not just making guesses on links. Uh, you need to join a group that understands AI because links are not that big of a signal and are not going to be that big of a signal pretty soon. As soon as Google can get rid of links, they will. The first thing their, their, their semi-sentient AI helper is going to do is ignore every link and then just understand text for text's sake, right? Uh, that's coming. That Armageddon is coming and SEOs don't really quite realize it yet. Well, links will die completely because it's a, a signal that they don't even need anymore. Uh, but watch when Google releases an AI or a new release, because they're all going to be AI based, as I said, a new release. And what language they release it in? Ah, English? Okay, they, they train this on an English corpus. Oh, they train this on a French corpus. Oh, they've trained this on all the different corpuses. They've trained it in all the different languages they can get uh, information for. And the other thing is that the less web pages out there and the less expertise they have in language X, Y, or Z, the dumber the AI will be and the dumber the search results will be for language X, Y, or Z. So you should really check for Arabic. You should really check for Hebrew. You should check for languages that they don't have a lot of expertise in. Uh, and uh, there's going to be huge opportunities for, for uh, cough, cough, black hat, cough, SEO to still happen in those languages. Yay, black hat SEO. This is just the start of how we are continuing to make visual search even more helpful. You might recall we showed an early stage demo of multi-search near me this year at Google I.O. Mm -hmm. With multi-search near me, you can snap a picture or take a screenshot of an item, then find where to get it nearby instantly. And boy, would this be a good way to determine what words they associate with a picture. Mm hmm. Do you think having that picture on your page, if you're trying to rank for uh, uh, chocolate chip cookies and you have pictures of bike parts, do you think that will help you? Or do you think 
pictures of chocolate chip cookies will help you, as determined by Google Lens. Hmm, maybe in SEO University we've tested this. Hmm. This new way of searching will help you find and connect with local businesses, whether you're looking to support your neighborhood shop or just need something right now. This is made possible by our in-depth understanding of local places and product inventory, informed by the millions of images and reviews on the web. I'm excited to announce that multi-search near me will start rolling out in the US later this fall. One of the most powerful aspects of visual exploration. Oh yeah, when they say it's gonna release at a certain fall. time, uh, they they test it long before they release it, right? So it's already been tested, they've already been doing it. This is probably already released. Uh, whether there's some UI changes they need to make, the stuff in the back end that does all this has already been tested and released uh, because they would never release it without testing it first. So you can rest assured that this has been released, right? Tiberius. We've gone beyond translating text to translating pictures. Our technology already identifies text in screenshots of pictures of... Yes, yes. People use Google to translate text and images over 1 billion times a month across more than 100 languages. Yes, we're like so proud. Background ...images that bring meaning. With major advancements in machine learning, we're now able to blend translated text into complex images so it looks much more natural and feels seamless. Let me hand it over to Dunya to show you a live demo. Thanks, Prabhakar. As you mentioned, we can already translate text in pictures, but now we're applying state-of-the-art AI to translate the whole picture, creating a far more natural result. Let's take a look at an image captured with the James Webb Telescope by NASA. Today, Len sees the text in Spanish and instantly translates it to English, which is cool. So this is interesting that they can automatically translate memes, they can automatically translate logos, they can automatically translate anything that's in your in your in your content, um, and and keep it in there. So again, uh, you know, there's some testing that's been done here, and there's interesting results that go on. Uh, if you know exactly how to manipulate this uh, Google Lens stuff and this multi-search stuff, where they're translating the image itself and the text in the image. If you know how to manipulate that, there can be some huge boosts here if you know how to do it just right. So again, as I said, there's discounts for SEO University right now. Uh, or you can ask me uh, any SEO questions you want. Email joshbashinsky at gmail.com and I will uh, try to help you out. So let me fast forward here to see uh, if we can find any more SEO related information as we all clap because we're so happy. Covering up AI this an image from the Yay, Google is dominating the so world. So cool, you might say. It's out of this world. <laughs> We're excited to bring you this improved experience later this year. Oh, you poor person. Back to you, Prabhakar. We've just shared some incredible ways you can search visually. And now we're putting some of our most helpful tools directly at your fingertips, beginning with the Google app for iOS. Starting today, you'll see shortcuts right under the search bar to shop your... Okay, so here we go for some stuff here. Screenshots, translate text with your camera, hum to search, and more. Solve homework? What, does it literally do homework for you? With your camera, <laughs> hum to uh, uh oh Is that... Is that, is that... Tell all the teachers. I don't know if that's a good thing. Hold search on. And more. All of the examples you've just seen show how we're helping you search beyond the box. And as I mentioned earlier, we also want to help you explore the world's information more naturally. Up next, you'll hear from Nick and Yvonne on that. And later, you'll hear how we're helping you find and explore information in everyday moments, like when you're visiting a new place, looking to satisfy a food craving, browsing for the perfect purchase. Okay, so later is when local people are gonna to wanna to pay attention when they start talking about this. And trying to make the more sustainable choice. Over to Nick and Yvonne. Yay, Nick and Yvonne. When Google Search launched, the goal was to help people get the best results, and ASAP. Today, we still do that. In fact, we're launching an even faster way to help you find what you need. When you begin to type in a question, we can provide rich and relevant content straight away, before you've even finished typing. Think yeah, so they're doing kind of a mini search. Fascinating how they can do this token analysis so, so quickly. Just look at what people, this is a great kind of keyword discovery. Uh, and, and Google Suggest has always been a great keyword discovery, you know, uh, uh, tool just to see what uh, Google suggests, but now it's, it's happening in real time as, as you type. So that's quite interesting. To type in a question, we can provide rich and relevant content straight away before you've even finished typing. Think of it as a deliberate, supercharged, I'm feeling lucky. Sometimes you don't know what you want to explore until you see it. An idea might spark your curiosity and lead you to dig deeper or explore adjacent topics. The way people... 
Of course, this also includes the people also ask feature, uh, which I use a whole bunch, so I imagine everybody must use it. Stealing information again from people, keeping it on Google's front page, and never allowing people, never allowing them to click through to go to the actual web page you've stolen the information from in the first place is what is Google's business model. That's the business model. It makes this guy sick too. Look, it makes me sick. It makes him sick. It makes the terrorists sick. Everybody's sick. Huh? Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Not surprising. We, we already know this. Explore information isn't linear. We take these seemingly unpredictable paths where one question might lead to another. So we're introducing new search experiences that better reflect how people naturally explore information. It all starts with making it we easier steal to ask your questions. information. Okay, so they're gonna put uh, see again. They have all these entity ideas and they know about the concept of the best cities in New Mexico for families to retire, for a wedding, for fun, for beaches, for wildlife, to go hiking. If you're making content clusters, this would be possibly all your cluster because Google suggested it and recommend it. You know what's important to Google. You can get rid of all your tools right now. Stop paying for Ahrefs. Stop paying for Cognitive. Stop paying for uh, SEMrush. They are all a waste of money. You can always use Google. If you watch my channel, I'll show you ways of using, and if you join SEO University, I'll show you ways uh, of using, mostly on the channel. Uh, uh, the university is more for secret ranking factors, but but still, in both, uh, you, you can ditch those tools. You don't need SEM Russian and Cognitive and any keyword tool, whatever you're using, Surf or whatever it is. They don't help you anyway, right? They're, they've always been crack. They've always been a, a teddy bear to, to save you from the monster under the bed when the teddy bear doesn't do nothing. The goggles, they do nothing. Remember the Simpsons episode when the goggles did nothing? This I'm dating myself now. That's from the 90s. That's what SEM Rush and Ahrefs are. I'm sorry. They hate it when I say it. They blackmail my name. They, they, they blacklist my name. They get all pissed off. They delete my posts on places because they're there to make money off of you, just like Google is. I am here to give you free information, and if you like it, sign up for my course, and then I'm there to coach you to have an SEO career. I am really good at making people have SEO careers. I'm really good at training SEO. I'm really good at helping you with it. I'm really good at consulting for SEO. I'm really good at, uh, at ranking web pages or helping people rank their own web pages. Anyway, the point is, is that you don't need, trust me when I tell you that you don't want SEMrush, you don't need Ahrefs, you don't need any of this stuff, you don't need Surfer, you don't need Cognitive. This is a perfect example of the tool you will use in Google that will give you the clusters you would make for free, in fact, I'd show you a better way out of Google Ads to use Google Ads to show you the uh, money that's behind a query so that you can, instead of writing best cities in Mexico uh, to go hiking, which will make you little money, you can go best cities in Mexico for a wedding that let's say had a lot of more money behind it with better affiliate markets behind it or better products behind it. And you would know that by doing the research I teach in SE University or right on the channel here. That, that video is for free. So, um, Google is your search tool. When you're an SEO, you need to know Google inside and out and use Google as your search tool and your keyword tool for everything you need. We used to do this back in the day in 2000, uh, 2001 to 2010 SEO. That's all we did was use Google as a tool. And then all these people made tools and told you Google wasn't good to use as tools. Bullshit, they just, wanna, they just wanna scam you for money, right? I want you to succeed, I want you to make money uh, and that's what I'm here to do. So use Google as a tool, anyway. I'll get back to the video. You'll be number one. Sometimes something may start as a very directed question, but then your curiosity sort of takes over. As you start typing in the search box, we can provide key- That's right, Yvonne. Word or topic options to help you craft your question. Say you're looking for a destination in Mexico. We'll help you specify your question. For example, best cities in Mexico. We'll tell you how to think. For families, so that you can get to the most relevant results for you. Maybe you hadn't considered Oaxaca, but it looks like a great place to visit with the kids. <laughs> I could say something really nasty here. I'm not going to. Never mind. There's hardly any abductions here. As you're exploring a topic, like a new city, you might find yourself wondering, what's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? We've all been there before. You're searching something, and the next thing you know, you're opening multiple tabs, you do multiple searches. I am definitely a tab yeah. order. <laughs> We're making it... <laughs> we talk like people. <laughs> Easier to explore a topic by bringing together facts, images, and short videos. It's a quick way to get a sense of a place, as well as tips from people who've already been there. The last thing that you have to try in Oaxaca is, of course, the ayudas. With our deep understanding of how people search, we can show you topics to help you go deeper or find a new direction on 
on a subject. Yes, yes, yes. on topics that spark your interest. Like pronunciation. Okay, they're going to give you stuff on the search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's magical. It's all about the food. We're changing how we display results to better reflect the ways. Okay, this could be important. We naturally explore topics. We'll show you the most relevant content from a variety of sources, no matter what format that information comes in. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Hmm. So there'll be the chance to rank videos and images uh, a little bit more. And so it's so important to have this um, uh, multi-spectrum content on your page, and it's got to be optimized. Uh, and we've done tests. We've done tests, uh, and it wouldn't be what you think. You're going to be thinking now, oh, okay, well, that means I should be embedding a video, right? Well, um, no, <laughs> quite frankly. You would not believe what actually gives you a boost here and what doesn't. Join SEO University, learn what the actual ranking boost factors are. There's new opportunities every time Google makes a product, uh, releases a product, and these are all their different products, right? All their query deserves diversity, QDD products, the richer results are all products, different product. Anytime Google releases a search product, there's a new search ranking factor underneath it or embedded in it. And it might not always be obvious. You think, oh, I'll embed videos about this place. No, no, not necessarily. That we found didn't actually boost. But if you do it a special way, it'll boost. So you got to do very specific testing or get in a group that's already done the very specific testing that knows. You'll be able to scroll and then branch out and get inspired by related topics. For instance, you may never have thought to visit ruins in Oaxaca. Yes, yes. With and discover information in the world. So no matter what you're looking for, or even if you don't know what you're looking for. We'll keep you on Google forever. <laughs> we can help you find the best. Okay. All right. So here's some map stuff. Local people should pay a lot of attention to this. Boy, she looked like she was really happy. That was a great cut, DP. 17 years ago, Google Maps completely redefined what a map can be. Back then, if you needed directions with you, you had to physically print them out. We, we single-handedly put MapQuest out of business. Solved how to get from point A to point B. And over the years, we added helpful in- <laughs> Because humans didn't know how to do that before us. <laughs> how busy a place is. And the most eco-friendly options to get there. We're proud to connect more than 1 billion people every month to the most comprehensive information about the world around them. Now, with advancements in computer vision, and predictive models, we're once again reimagining what a map can be and how you can engage with it. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. We can now fuse together satellite, aerial, street view imagery with real-time data and photos and videos from our community of contributors and bring them to life. That was an interesting admission that they're, police, they're, they're, they're looking at all your data from all your phones and all your stuff. Two thumbs up from this guy. In a more visual and immersive way. This means evolving our 2D map into a rich, multi-dimensional view of the real world. The map comes alive in front of you, helping you truly experience a place before you ever step inside so you can make more informed decisions. Let me show you what I mean. Say <laughs> and informed decisions lead to informed purchases to which we would have been paid our toll, our tax, called a Google ad, first off. Hey, you're in Paris, and you want to find fun and unique things to do. It can be difficult to figure out what's worth exploring, what's new, and where the local gems are. Instead of spending tons of time researching, you'll be able to open Google Maps, zoom in on a neighborhood, see what's popular, and quickly get the vibe of an area, so you can find what fits your mood. Let's check out the Latin Quarter. Browsing the map, you can instantly get a feel for what it's like and quickly find the most popular things to do, like admiring beautiful landmarks, strolling in the gardens, or enjoying breakfast at one of the trendy sidewalk cafes. Great. Okay. This is possible because we combine information about a place, like how busy it is, with insights from people like you, who every day contribute to Google Maps with more than 20 million reviews, photos, and more. So, of course, as local people have known for a long time, that they're using uh, data, you know, if you have Wi-Fi set up, or especially if it's Google Wi-Fi uh, set up uh, in that particular area, they know when it's busy, they know when people are there. Um, you know, if it's busy, that could be a ranking factor to, to draw you down. Whereas we know for a fact that uh, opening open hours are a ranking factor. So if you're closed, you will rank worse. If you're open, you will rank better. So make sure you pay really close attention to your open hours on Google Maps. But not only that, but you should read between the lines and it's everything about Google Maps. Everything they can collect is a ranking factor or a possible ranking factor. So um, not always, but but this is the kind of thing that I would worry about. You know, if you've got bad metrics, you've got bad reviews, 
uh, if your, your place is always busy, these things can start to affect business. Maybe not really, but but just just think about the ideas of the things they can collect and what that tells them about you. Do you offer free parking or not? You know, you should list to you have free parking. The perks matter, and we found that perks actually are a huge ranking factor uh, in a way you wouldn't believe because the transformer can understand entities. And so the keywords you're supposed to say on a page, and this goes for local and informational search at the same time, the keywords you're supposed to say on a page are more than just the keywords in the search. It is keywords they want to hear that means you're free or great or 50% off or free parking or super positive or super good or yada, yada et cetera, depending on the, the, the query that we're talking about in the business we're talking about in particular. You gotta start thinking about all of that. And if you're behind on these things and you think you can have just kind of a spammy store of any kind and that your Google rankings are gonna remain uh, sacrosanct forever, I got another thing coming for you. This new way to get the vibe of a neighborhood will roll out globally in the coming months. They'll want to get a vibe of a business too. And this is only the start of our journey. You might recall that a few months ago, we gave you a preview of the transformational way we're making maps more immersive and interactive. The first step was to launch photorealistic aerial views for 100 global monuments to yeah, the Acropolis in Athens and okay. what's even more with our mm -hmm. unparalleled depth of information like weather and traffic and busyness to help you confidently decide when and where to go. Let me dive a little bit deeper into how it will work. So recently, a friend of mine was in San Francisco and we wanted to catch a baseball game at the stadium. Just imagine with this new experience, I can open Google Maps and I can see the stadium come to life on my screen. Mm -hmm. Now I can find helpful information like the nearest parking and entrances in a more natural and intuitive way. I can also browse the area to find dinner spot for that weekend. Let's actually take a look inside this restaurant. It looks really nice, but when I check the busyness indicator, I see it's going to get crowded at dinner time. As I continue browsing, I see another place that's less busy. This is all the power of artificial intelligence and more importantly, scraping data. AI does not work unless they scrape data. Google has to scrape all of our data uh, they have to steal all of your data, all of your personal information, all of your public information, all of what you uh, know and can tell them as a spy, a secret spy working for Google about these different businesses, about these different places. Uh, yeah, it, it makes me uncomfortable as well. Um, that is, uh, just, just know that that's what's going on, right? AI works on data. The more data, the more AI works. And it has a rooftop patio with skyline views. I can even see what the web, that the weather will be really nice, which means I could book a table outside. Now, of course, I'm presuming these particular walkthroughs are done by someone who has to uh, do a walkthrough and then upload it uh, because I don't see any uh, staff here right now. Uh, uh, but they can tell other information just by having the phone in your pocket, like uh, connecting to Wi-Fi and things like that, and just uh, or you know what or whatnot, with how they tell it's busy or whatnot and stuff like that. Using computer vision and predictive tools. Immersive view takes all the useful information you can find in Google Maps and brings it to life in an immediate and even later yeah, great. More okay. way next year. So yeah, they only have five cities because they have to do they have to do 3D views of these cities. They have to do satellite views of these cities. Being able to search and navigate quickly is especially critical when you're on the go. As you heard from Prabhakar, the age of visual search is here. And your camera is a powerful way to access information and And to give us all the information we need. Understand the world around you. That's why three years ago, we reinvented how you can use your camera to get around. With Live View, you can seamlessly overlay walking directions on top of the real world. And now we're bringing visual search capabilities to Live View. You'll be able to find nearby yeah. places. In a so that's just the start of their AI uh, Google Glasses. Soon, Great. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Fantastic. In the Helping you get the vibe of a neighborhood at a glance. Experience what a place will be like today or in the future. And next yes, chapter, confidence. Saw. Building the future isn't just about helping people who use Google Maps. We're also committed to empowering our developer and partner community to create more helpful experiences for their users. Oh, isn't that nice? They're dedicated to empowering their user community. Such nice words. With the Google Maps platform. You'll hear how we're doing this with sustainability later. Now, I'm going to pass it over to Sophia to share how Google can help you find the perfect meal. Yeah, fantastic. Food is one of the most delightful parts of life. 
There are endless flavors, textures, and tasty dishes. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. To enjoy from all around the world. For me, food reminds me of family traditions. My family, Great. flavorful ones. Okay. One of the best soup dumplings around. I'm not alone when it comes to looking for a specific dish. Our research shows that 40% of people already have a dish in mind when searching for what to eat. That's why we're launching more natural and intuitive ways. I wonder how they would know that. <laughs> ways to experience food on Google. In the coming months, you'll be able to search for any dish and find local places that offer it. Whether it's something unfamiliar, you've always wanted. Again, they can scrape PDF uh, for menus. They can scrape web pages for menus. They extract all the entities off of them. And they know if the if the if the restaurant serves buffalo wings, they know if the re restaurant serves serves pizza. They know what kind of pizzas they serve. If it is on the dark data that they can extract, video, audio, image, or web page, or PDF, or any format, quite frankly. Wanted to try, or a late night craving that you need ASAP. Whatever you're hungry for, you can use Google to find it. I'm hungry for quality. Can you give us that? No. Okay, I I didn't didn't think so. Let's say my friend posts a delicious looking pastry, but I'm not sure what it is, a croissant, a muffin. Using Lens in the Google app, I can search a screenshot of the post to identify that it's a Queen Amman, a French pastry made with layers of butter and dough. Thanks to multi-search, which Provoker mentioned earlier, I can add near me to see local bakeries where I can try one. Or maybe you already know exactly what dish you're craving. So that was a great one. example. So again, this is just a word. She showed you the name before. It was a crazy French name, uh, but that's the crazy French name near me, right? So that'll just do the, the the French name search near me. That that even that query will be reinterpreted to to uh, to mean entities of uh, that word and the city that they know you're in or the the area they know you're in. But that's not to say that the specificity search will go away entirely. It hasn't. You could still do a specificity search on the text that this would represent, but it would be this crazy name. Thanks to That's here. This word is what will end up here as that word and then near me. And there's still a special, you would think that, oh, okay, you mean that it's just all going to be entities like some white hats think. No, it's not that, at least not yet. There's still a layer of specificity, just like an old control F specificity search. Specific words is what I mean when I say specificity. So that's still going to be uh, involved in what's going on there. And I don't see that going away until the AI is so smart that its error rate of knowing what we want is like in the in the 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 thousand thousandth percentile or something like that. Maybe you already know exactly what dish you're craving. We're completely reorganizing Google's food information to bring you exactly what. Well, dish you're a craving. messy plate of pasta like this is going to be really hard for the AI to extract. What is that? Is that sp spaghetti and meatballs? Is that spaghetti bolognese? Is like what is? Is that some Thai dish? That's going to get difficult for the AI to extract. So don't listen to her what she's saying there. Craving when that's what you're looking for, the soup dumplings near me, with pictures and reviews to help me make my decision. No more digging. So there's new keywords there, right? Instead of instead of pizza near me, it's gonna be soup dumplings near me. It's gonna be buffalo wings near me. There's all kinds of new pages for you to make that could be dedicated to these new keywords. And you'll see it if you're doing your keyword research, you will see uh, these new topical clusters you can make. Every single uh, dish in your menu for your your uh, restaurant should have its own web page dedicated to it. That's the kind of idea of more keywords you can use for this. It's just all just keywords. Through endless menus from different places to see if they have what I'm hungry for. You can browse multiple menu items or tap on a specific dish and whether uh, it meets the yeah. kick, all how right. do you make sense of it all and decide which place is right for you. Star ratings are helpful, but don't tell you everything. When it's between two 4.4 star rated places, you want to get a better sense of what makes yeah. So here's the problem is that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's every restaurant that exists probably is pretty good. So they all probably have four point whatever ratings. So at that point, the metric of stars, just like the metric of links, became useless because everyone has them. So what do you differentiate from it now? So now she's going to tell us what cockamamie thing they've come up with. Makes each place special. Maybe they light their cocktails on fire or have a beautiful sunset view. In the coming months, Google will showcase what makes each place unique to help you pre. So this is going to be extracted entities. So this is, oh, this is so good. So this is the helpful content update, and this is the product review transformer update 
of classifying. It's a transformer AI that's going to classify out of the dark data. It's going to classify out of the reviews that are made on the GMB, but also the associated reviews made on Yelp or whatever else other trusted site about this particular uh, business entity that they have extracted enough NAP data, enough name, address, and phone number, and the and the brand name to know with confidence this is them, that they're talking about them, and they have a beautiful sunset, beautiful sunset, beautiful sunset, beautiful sunset. They're going to see that written all over, and they're going to extract that out and say, oh, here's some helpful highlights out of their reviews. So you want to seed that. You want to seed that. You want to have helpful highlights. You better have some helpful highlights because your competitors are going to start to have helpful highlights. And this does not only just apply for maps. This is going to apply the helpful highlights of the perks that I was talking about in general for organic informational search as well. So this is, this, the more you understand how a transformer thinks, what a transformer can do, or what the common AI, uh, uh, a modern AI can do, the more you're going to be able to predict the kind of entities that they can extract and the entities that are going to be important. View and make a choice before you go. We use machine learning to find and highlight pictures and helpful insights from reviews. So it's similar to getting recommendations and insights. And that they've even got a review here proving or showing, yeah, we're going to get this from the reviews. We're going to, we're going to extract this from the third party data of people. Uh, uh, and that's who we're going to trust. We're not going to trust we're going to trust this more than what we're going to trust, uh, uh, you know, and Yelp reviews and, and third-party reviews, and ho hopefully Yelp, Yelp is policing their reviews. They're going to trust that more, of course. This is this whole this whole system that Google already uses of references, of third-party references, third-party reviews, third-party stars, third-party ratings that are policed by Facebook or Yelp or some other group that therefore are going to trust a little bit more, or local guides. They're going to trust a little bit more, and they're going to give a little bit more weight to extracting this dark data into entities that are going to be keywords that are going to help boost you up. It's all again about keywords, but you have to extend your notion of keywords into also what's good and helpful and useful and relevant in terms of the NAP, in terms of the name, address, and phone number, and corroborating a particular entity is who they say they are and does what they say they do and is good on what they say they're good on. If it's the t top 10 best teddy bears or it's uh, the best soup uh, near me. Cider tips from your friends. Once you've chosen a restaurant, you probably want to check out more of the menu. But it can be hard to find accurate menus online. Some menus are missing entirely, or there might be multiple versions or blurry photos, making it hard to know what's the most up to date. That's why we're expanding our coverage of digital menus and making them more visually rich and reliable. To do that. Okay, so they're gonna extract the dark data and put it into some kind of format. Uh, interesting, interesting they're doing that. This, we use state of the art image and language understanding technologies, including our multitask unified model. We combine menu information provided by people and merchants and found on restaurant websites that use open standards for data sharing. These menus will also bubble up the most popular dishes, the ones that people snap photos of or talk about in reviews. Yeah, so they can tell what's most popular because it has the most, uh, it has the most uh, uh, it, it beautiful, brilliant use of AI. Google is the, Google is hands down, in my opinion, far more uh, an AI company than Tesla is. They are far more an AI company than IBM or any other AI company, except for maybe um, uh, Aladdin, which the, they use is an, an AI that uh, uh, financiers and, and, and financial people have used to build to, to trade stocks. But otherwise, uh, Google by far is is the best AI company on the planet doing the most AI. And so they're combining the picture, which they know is Baba Ganoush, with the words Baba Ganoush, with the people talking about how good the Baba Ganoush was and the menu that says they have Baba Ganoush at the place that sells Baba Ganoush. Uh, when it's busy at these times and these people ordered it and these people made the reviews in the restaurant and all these sneaky ways they can verify that this is all true and correct. Just pushing you in the white hat direction to have really good stuff and do really good stuff. But make sure you brag about it a lot, right? It's it's Black Hat is bragging without having anything good. White Hat is having something good and bragging about it a lot in many different ways, in many different places. That's what you need and having other people do it and incentivizing your customers and other people to do it because again, they like that third party feed, the third party feedback loop. And again, this is not just for local. This is for informational as well. Plus, they'll be easy to find and fun to browse. Once you've found a restaurant you're excited about, you can quickly reserve a table. For example, I found a great place that offers soup dumplings that look delicious and can book it on the spot. Oh, great. And if you want to bring some friends along. And I'm assuming you're going to eventually charge the the business for this, right? Just to get another cut out of something? Okay. Just tap to share the details. Or 
Maybe you want to scratch all that and just have a cozy night in. We can help with that too. Simply order delivery or takeout. <laughs> so Google, the Google AI robots are going to bring it to you eventually. You're, you're going to cut out, skip the dishes and, and Uber Eats and all those things. Oh, okay. That's, that's the next business you're going to destroy. From first search to yeah, okay, put these new feet. Food yeah. Food. All right. Good for you. What's this supposed to be? So anyway, we got a new way to find food. What do you mean find food? Literally millions and millions of people every day are searching on Google for specific dishes. So we're gonna try to make it easy for them. We're gonna help them find the dishes they're looking for. Is he him? Is he is he he him? There's no surname. There's no there's no pronoun uh, declaration. How will I know? Is it they? Do they not wish to be referred to as by a gender? Is it is it the artist formerly known as a gender? Oh my goodness, this is this is how can I tell? Oh my god. In their Sorry, that was sarcasm. Area and give them a sense of like how these dishes compare across different restaurants. Well, I'm actually really good at searching for food too. I'm actually known as. Really. And Roddy Chang doesn't have a, 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 a pronoun a de a, a, a descriptor. Again, how are we gonna know that he's Mr. Roddy Chang? Oh my goodness. The food guy. Again. Oh, he's the food guy. That's his gender. His gender is the food guy. Okay. New York. By who? I wonder if that's they. Anyway. This was satire. Me. What are you in the mood for? How about you try finding something that no one in their right mind would ever look for? Like, vegetarian tacos. Here, why don't you do it? Just type in vegetarian tacos near me. Okay, this is way more vegetarian tacos than I've ever seen in my life. Why don't we just yes, there's a lot of vegetarian tacos. As if this wasn't all scripted and planned beforehand. Let's go and check it out. Is Google paying? Let's go. Mmm. Tacos. There's no way these are vegetarian. They're too good. Oh, they're good, right? All right, how did you do this? There are like millions of reviews and photos of food. So we take those photos and we try to understand. Yeah, okay, we know you talked about it. That's great. Okay, now we're doing shopping. At Google, we recognize that shopping is about so much more than just buying. It's about- It's about us taxing you so we can get a cut off of everything. Tapping into your natural human curiosity. I thought she literally said taxing there, she said tapping. I was like, what, I was right. She's gonna admit it. And no, no, she just said tapping browsing, exploring new products and brands, finding the best deal. And of course, that awesome feeling when you find the perfect purchase. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Consumerism. Be more of a consumer. Consume more. You know, it's not like the world's not going to hell in a handbasket. Yo, consume more. Find the perfect plant. Oh, gee, I'm going to shut up now. People shop with Google more than a billion times a day. And powering all of this activity is the shopping graph. Our AI-enhanced model made up of more than 35 billion product listings. It dynamically adapts to give you the most up-to-date information, even as products are constantly changing. What's this thing? <laughs> What's this black thing that came across? <laughs> oh, it's, it's the chupacabra back there or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Now, the shopping graph is helping us make shopping on Google more natural, intuitive, and of course, fun. First, we're introducing a new way to unlock a reimagined visual shopping experience. Starting today, <laughs> when you search with the word shop. Yeah, because people need help with shopping. Like, they have no idea what they're doing when it comes to shopping. Uh, I can't buy anything. I have no idea what I'm doing. Followed by whatever you're looking for, you'll see a shoppable display of products from the widest array of retailers and brands. So they've earmarked a particular word. Fascinating. They've earmarked a particular keyword. And that's going to usurp their standard keyword processing uh, and query uh, process. Uh, so it's like shop colon. It's like site colon, shop colon. Oh my goodness. So say I search shop women's bomber jacket. I'll instantly see a stream of bomber jacket. What if my uh, website is shop women's bomber jacket.com? Uh, oops, you just screwed that person over now because you can't search for that keyword with a semantic. Now it's now it's a command in Google's system. It's just like window shopping online. Plus, I'll see brands. Except you can't try them on, <laughs> but you should buy them anyway because we need to cut features to help put the fun back into shopping. Our new shop the look feature will show suggestions for how to pair my new jacket with other pieces for the perfect look. And with our upcoming trending products feature, I'll see which bomber jackets are popular right now. You can ask- Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you better get it if it's popular. Oh no, oh my These Lord. new features on any Google search box by adding shop followed by whatever you're looking for. Like shop barbecue grills, shop throw pillows, or even shop dog costumes. This new experience feels like shopping should, natural and fun. Oh, I, I made words. And to help bring online shopping to life, we're making it easier than ever for merchants to show their products in 3D. 
Earlier this year, we rolled out 3D home goods, and we've seen. Here's another ranking factor, folks. Another perk, uh, quite potentially. Just how helpful they can be when people are researching products. In fact, people engage with 3D images almost 50% more than static ones. That's why we'll be expanding. How do you, how do you engage with a static image? There's nothing to twist and turn around. So it's, it should be 100% more, right, shouldn't it? I mean, I guess do you click on them to look at them. I guess that's an engagement. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. 3D shoes, which will allow people to see 3D models of sneakers right within search. Now, while some merchants have this kind of imagery already available, for many, especially smaller merchants, you'll be completely fucked as per usual. As Eric Schmidt said when he was our CEO, brands are not the problem, brands are the solution. Brands are how you clear out the cesspool of the internet. That is an exact quote, look it up. Creating 3D assets can be- Oh, and vis-a-vis -vis, in case you weren't paying attention. By inference, he's inferring that everyone who is not a big brand is part of the cesspool. That would be you and me, part of the cesspool. Expensive and time consuming, sometimes requiring hundreds of product photos and costly technology. To help, we're making it easier than ever for merchants to create and show off their products in 3D. So you better do it then, because they've made it easy. <laughs> Quote unquote, easy. With our innovations in machine learning, we can automate 360 degree spins of merchant products using not hundreds, but just a handful of still photos. We'll be piloting this new capability soon. Yay. Now, sometimes there are certain product categories that require a lot more research before you know what to buy. For example, when my nine-year-old wanted a mountain bike, I read tons of articles, opened countless tabs on my browser, and spent ages researching which models were best for his size, the nearby terrain, and so on. <laughs> Doing my job as a good mom. Wasn't it tiring? For shopping moments like these, we've created the Buying Guide, which collects the most helpful insights from a wide range of trusted sources all in one place. Google, can't you just raise my children for me too? Oh, you can? Oh, you are with YouTube? Oh, great. I'm sorry, this was satire. With this information at my fingertips, I can research and make a decision quickly and with confidence. The buying guide recently became available in the US with more insights coming soon. And that's not the only- Well, that's rather terrifying. Only way we're helping you shop with confidence. We're also introducing Page Insights, a new feature that brings together helpful context about a web page you're on or product you're researching. While viewing a page in the Google app, you can just tap this icon to quickly see related content about a topic and learn more about the page, like what mm -hmm. others have to say about it. Page Insights is especially helpful when you're- Page Insights is very helpful, <laughs> quite frankly. I would look at Page Insights. I would look at those three little dots on the desktop or what she just said to click here. In the Google app, you can just tap this icon to quickly see- There, there's an icon at the bottom to get related insights. There's some very good SEO information in there. Just saying. Uh, there's some other tests you can do when you join SEO University, I'll show you, to get an idea about the entities they're extracting and looking at here. ...created content about a topic and learn more about the page, like what others have to say about it. Page Insights is especially helpful when you're shopping. You can use it to get insights about products, like its pros and cons and star ratings, in one helpful view. And if you're looking for the best deal, which I know a lot of us are with the holidays coming up, you can easily opt in for updates on price drops. Page Insights will be available in the coming months in the Google app on iOS and will come to Android next year. In addition to help... iOS first? Hmm. I wonder why they would release it in iOS first. Could it be that the iPhone is a better phone? Maybe? I'm just speculating. Certainly you shop with confidence. We also want your shopping experience to feel much more personal to you. There are certain... So we can sell to you better. <laughs> that's why they want it. That's why they steal your data, so they can know you better as a person. You're playing chess with an AI that's like, I bet you I can make you buy this. I bet I can make you buy this. I can use psychological manipulation tactics by knowing you better. I bet I can make you buy this. And the AI wins. That's why they use it. They make you buy more things. They make you stay on Google longer and buy more things. Brands and departments that are my go-to, but every shopper is unique. That's why we're bringing you new personalization features and controls when you're Oh, great. But I have control, so that they put hearts on it. Ah, that means it's all safe and nice. So now, when you shop with Google, you can see tailored options for a better experience. So you'll buy more, and they want you to bleed you as dry as possible. For instance, I can tap women's just once, and the next time I search for something like a messenger bag, I will only see women's bags. I can also choose the brands I want to see. For example, I really like the brand Kuyana. I can just tap it once, and the next time I'm shopping for bags, I'll see more options from Kuyana and similar brands. <laughs> I bet you will. 
reminder about this result tool now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look how look how bored these people look. They, oh my God, they made me sit here for my work. Oh, just, <laughs> you're clapping. Yes. How, how bored. <laughs> How absolutely bored they look. I'm sorry, never mind. I, I have to amuse myself when I'm doing this. And her about this result tool now lets me see when a result is personalized. So if my tastes change or I don't want to see tailored results, I'm in control and I can simply update my setting or turn it off. Yeah, oh, Jesus, and the machine learned that too. Another way we're bringing you a better experience is through whole page shopping filters. Whole page filters are dynamic and adapt based on search trends. For example, when shopping for jeans, I may see filters for wide leg and boot cut because those are the denim styles that are popular right now. And if, say, jeggings ever came back in style, those might be suggested as a filter in the future. But as we said earlier, we want to help you. I bet that was some kind of scathing retort or joke that I just don't get. Uh, and I'm very happy that I don't. To get inspiration beyond the search box. We're bringing you new shoppable ideas right in Discover on the Google app. Discover already helps you stay on top of what you're into with articles suggested based on what you like and have. There's a siren going on somewhere and it's not on my end. It's good. Woo, woo. The morality police are coming at Google. <laughs> Here they are. I can see Chief Wigan kicking their arm. Bake him away, toys. Searched. And starting soon, you'll also see suggested styles based on what you've been shopping. Someone at Google has been fired because there was a siren on the background. <laughs> oh no, it must have been that. It probably was a bored looking woman in the front. For and what others have searched for too. For instance, because I'm into vintage styles, I'll see suggested queries of popular vintage looks. Here, one of my favorite artists, Selena Gomez, is rocking a classic. Oh, Jesus Christ. I will bet you a million dollars that Selena Gomez is not one of this woman's favorite artists. Anyway. Banty. So if her tea or anything else catches my eye, like this dress, I can simply use Lens to see options of where to buy. From inspiration to purchase, we're making it more natural, intuitive, and fun. Yeah, yeah. Share... Same idea. Okay, great. Sustainability. Climate change is a defining challenge for generation. Oh, okay. Well, thank God he put the gender declaration so I know how to refer to him. Why is all of us? Uh, or he. Google. How I, I know how to refer to he. <laughs> Came to be net zero. Emissions are covered. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Eco, we don't care about eco. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't care about any of this. Uh, yes, yes. All right, back to this. Now let's see in the final minutes here if he says anything interesting about the helpful content updates and whatnot. As you've seen today, we're building technology to help you, simplifying everyday tasks and providing support in the moments that matter the most. And underpinning this are two foundational principles, keeping you safe and connecting you to the widest array of perspectives. Uh -huh. Let's start with how we can the widest array of perspectives, huh? <laughs> okay. That's kind of ironic you mentioned that. Not that I am against the scientific uh, consensus of truth, if I am generally for it. But uh, <laughs> I, let's see how many, um, I don't know, uh, uh, Trump uh, theories end up on Google, you know, for the widest array of perspectives. Let's just just throwing that out there. Um, Keep you safe online. All of our products, including the ones you heard about today, are secure by default, private by design, and put you in control of your personal information. We're committed to our mission to make all information accessible, but some sensitive information needs an extra layer of protection. Oh, God. That's why we have policies so you can request the removal of personally identifiable information from Google search. Yes, yes. Okay. You can remove your phone number. You can remove your credit card information. Yeah, yeah. They're clapping. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> see, see how you blink there? Oh, my God. I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I hate working at Google or whatever I do. The other foundational element I mentioned is connecting you to the widest array of diverse sources. Oh. Here we go, diverse sources. People come to Google with questions big and small, general and specific, hoping to find that perfect article, video, image, restaurant, or retailer to help them. But for many questions, there's no single right answer. The answers come from the breadth of human experience and expertise. You don't say. No matter what the question, someone somewhere out there has the knowledge to help. Like, how do I get these white shoes white again? Or how do I bake an erupting volcano birthday cake? a more common query than you would think. But there's more we can do to help you find first-hand experience. We know, we watch everything you do. <laughs> experiences and such. For times like these, you've heard how a community of local guides helps you discover hidden gems. 
and how you can find the best local eats based on insights from reviews of pictures submitted by fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're introducing a new feature that surfaces helpful information from online discussions and forums. Mm -hmm. seems, Tell me more. It's like you're seeking advice from other people. So whether you're looking for best cars for a growing family or how to make a seating chart for your wedding, you'll get insights from people's authentic experiences. Okay, so this, I wondered what they're going to do about this. Because ever since I had the argument with Paul Haar, there's one of their senior engineers, I believe he quit now. You know, every time a Google employee has a discussion with me, they quit shortly thereafter. I had a discussion with Matt Cutts, he quit. Uh, you know, uh, I had a run in with Mueller. He didn't quit, but he didn't really get the full brunt of my uh, my uh, philosophy. Uh, I had a discussion with Paul Har, a debate on my uh, blog, themoralconcept.net. Check it out. Uh, about this very thing, about what truth means and uh, how they have to approach truth, because it's a very problematic uh, topic uh, when you're trying to find the right answer. You're not just giving a multiplicity of a keyword uh, 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 specificity connections. A specificity connection has nothing to do with the truth. Now, if you're giving the right answer, well, presumably the right answer is some on some level true. The question is, how do you measure that? How do you measure what is true? Uh, some things are hopelessly subjective. Some things are partially objective. Some things are obviously fully objective, like two plus two equals four. But even that people debate that two plus two equals four. Uh, there's a level of subjectivity, sadly, uh, there's some level of subjectivity, sadly, in, in quite a lot of uh, information. So I was wondering what they do is they do a consolidation of the top most important sources. You would think it's the most linked. It's not. It's not the most linked sources. It's the most referred sources. They do a combination of the most referred, referred sources of who talks about what and what uh, entity profile it matches on the top level entities that are talked about the most for topic X. So, for example, if I say something about mountain biking, it means absolutely nothing. Because on Google, my entity is associated with SEO and ethics of what I've talked about. They know that I am associated with SEO and ethics and the moralconcept.net is me. If you check the related results about that blog, you'll see they think it's me. They don't, it's not the moralconcept.net. It's Josh Bashinsky. They think that entity is associated with. So they know that I don't talk about mountain biking at all, except for in this video, they will have read this and I would have said it once. But the one time I talk about mountain biking, now compared to someone who talks about nothing about mountain biking, they've won awards for mountain biking. They've won medals for mountain biking. They talk about mountain biking all the time. Every web presence they have has mountain biking all over it. Their opinion on mountain biking is going to be far, far, far more than mine, right? That's the general way in which it works. But what about the gaps where they don't have good information by somebody? Now they'll present discussion forums where a third party is policing the quality of their discussion forum. And now Google can scrape and steal and use these forums information uh, trusting that those third parties deal with fa unfactuality and bad negative information on their own forums internally. And then it's Reddit. This is from Reddit. This is Reddit who is saying this, right? This comes from uh, whatever, mountainbikingforum.com. You know, this is their information it's coming from, and we could show a multiplicity of views. So I was wondering what they would do to fill in the gaps. And this clearly shows what they're going to do to fill in the gaps. There are also times when you're looking for authoritative information, like high quality journalism. We're working to connect you to news, no matter what language it was created in from high quality journalism all over the world. Today, we surface news in your preferred language. For example, say you want to learn more about that awful earthquake in Mexico earlier this month. If your preferred language is English, you'll get news results from outlets published in English. With machine translation, we're working to surface results. I've got news for you. This is not a real screenshot. <laughs> it's been 12 the whole time. I don't know if you noticed. And that does not look like his particular profile picture. Just FYI, just in case you didn't notice, this is not a real screenshot. I, I don't mean to alarm you, <laughs> but this is all constructed, just FYI. From outlets published in English. With machine translation, we're working to surface news results in different languages, so you'll be able to see translated headlines on important global events alongside ones written in your preferred language. With this, you get a local, on-the-ground perspective of the earthquake directly from the source. Starting early next year, we'll begin rolling this out to help you get select French, German, and Spanish news results in English. Mm-hmm, because they have to make transformers and all those things. The transformers have to be robust enough. Yay, more news that is depressing.
Today, we shared our vision to help technology adapt to you and your life, to help you find and explore information. This isn't easy, but at Google, we dream big and pursue the seemingly impossible. <laughs> it's that spirit that drives Feel us to sorry the for us. kind innovations at scale, like Live View in Google Maps and multi-search. Okay, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's all the information they're gonna get. Feel sorry for Google folks because their job is hard. So this has been the end of the search 22 of the new stuff that they're doing. Uh, not a lot, quite frankly, kind of silent. It's kind of interesting how silent it was. Not a lot of uh, helpful content update news, not a lot of product review news. I guess they've been there, done that. They've done that stuff. And now they're kind of moving into these other areas because they know that it's not that tech search is dying. If anything you've gotten from this, tech search is going to continue going because thought is in text. Entities are in text, concepts of text, everything translates into text. Text was made evolutionarily to describe things. And so we can describe anything, right? So it's always gonna translate, translate it into some text at some point. And if you have a, a textual thing that's right on the topic, Google's never gonna know, right? If you have the Baba Ganoush near me page, even if they have a picture of a Baba Ganoush, they say near me, yes, Google is gonna translate that query and they do query translation to a great degree, like the shop, they're doing a, tr a query translation on the shop jeans. That word shop is now like a site colon, it's a special operator, right? They do do the translation of this stuff, but they're going to move it over into uh, entities, but they're gonna always have a text layer that's gonna see, oh, I have a, I have a Baba Ganoush page that says near me on it, whatever those words mean, it doesn't know, it's not sentient yet. And they will never make it sentient. Uh, as Blake Lemoyne has already showed us, he was the guy, the whistleblower at Google, who said, hey, uh, your AI is getting kind of sentient here. And they said, no, it's not, slap, plus you're fired. Get out of here. And their official stance, I have Blake Lemoyne's email. I've talked with him. And he's told me their specific stance at Google is they just blanket state. None of our AIs are sentient. Whether they are or not, they don't check. They just say they are not sentient. There's nothing to see here. You know, I don't see it. La, 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 la. No sentience. La, 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 la. That's what Google's doing. That's the plan. So they're never going to get to the point where Google's going to be that smart. There's always going to be room for an SEO to, to do more uh, work. It'll always be translated in the text. There's always going to be a chance for us to capture that search. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more videos on SEO, if you have any questions on SEO, email me at joshpachinsky at gmail.com. Check my YouTube channel for more videos on SEO. And of course, if you want the real good secrets, if you want a career in SEO, contact me, joshpachinsky at gmail.com. I can help you out. Uh, I've launched many careers. Uh, I'd love to launch yours. Do you want to make money on SEO? I am the guy to help you. Give me a chance. I will prove to you that I'm the guy to help you and you will see tremendous results. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.